fantastic that you've come today, Laura. Um, as you probably know, I've got a fair amount of experience um, as a greenfield developer, mm. uh, but um, and most of that has been sort of you know fairly eco development. Um, <coughs> predominantly, I've worked on residential sites, um, and I suppose scale wise, probably up to about forty units. Okay. So uh, the reason I've got you in today is because um, I've been offered quite an interesting brownfield site. Um, I'm quite sort of interested in what might happen with the difference between looking at greenfield and brownfield. Slightly reserved about some of the constraints that there might be on the site. Um, I've got a couple of um, things I can show you. There's um, an aerial photograph of the site. Um, there's a plan. But okay. That's actually all I've got at the moment, to be honest. Um, and I was recommended to use you by another developer who I know very well, who said that you've got a lot of experience in this sort of thing. So basically, can you help me? Well, tell me a bit about you first of all. That would be helpful. <laughs> um, well, SLR, we're, uh, we're a consultancy um, offering environmental and advisory services. Mm -hmm. um, within the UK, we have uh, 24 offices, okay. and there's approximately 400 of us. Wow. Um, we're, yep. we're quite large. Um, and we're spread uh, across uh, just over 30 technical disciplines. So that's your air okay. quality, to your landscape visual impact assessment, um, and to planning and EIA uh, coordination, which is my bread and butter. That's what I do. Okay, yeah. Um, we um, operate um, across six different um, sectors, um, and I'm very much firmly within the built environment um, sector. Okay. Um, so, but within the company itself, there um, we operate across all sectors. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of the built environment, um, that's the residential, healthcare, education, for yeah. example. Okay. Now, this is really useful. So, it's, you haven't purchased this site, presumably? No, no, no. no. Um, very much at the very early stages. Um, yeah, it's about six hectares, I understand. Um, but I'd know nothing about the site other than. Who owns it? What it's been used for? <coughs> any okay. of that information? In terms of who owns it, it's actually um, in private hands. It was with an industrial um, owner who shifted it last year, and there's an intermediary who just wants to get rid of it now. Okay, fine. Um, obviously, industrial um, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Just from this aerial photograph, I can see that there's possibly um, potential for um, some kind of contamination on the site. It's very strangely there's a void of vegetation when the rest of the site um, is highly um, vegetated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think we have to go back to basics. Mm. Um, and this, if you're looking to purchase this land, you need to have a level of knowledge. Yeah, sure. You need to have that information. Um, as a planner, my first port of call is looking at planning history. Yeah. That can tell you a lot about the uses. You look at the local plan in terms of its allocation. Mm -hmm. um, again, that um, provides a lot of what could have happened um, on site. Um, fundamentally, we need to look at geographic um, information um, okay. as well. Um, Just to, you know, on the contamination side of things, I mean, that's the thing that worries me most about it, to mm. be honest. So um, it, it, I don't know a huge amount about it, but is there you know, stuff around polluter pays? Do I get a liability to somebody else? How does it work? In reality, for the purpose of this exercise, mm -hmm. um, you need to have a level of knowledge mm -hmm. um, about the contamination okay. because that will affect your um, potential purchase um, price. Okay. Yeah. Um, don't assume polluter pays. Right. Um, factor that into your offer price okay. um, for the site. Um, so we need to look at the geographic information. Okay. Um, we also need to um, consider uh, air quality issues as you're adjacent to an industrial estate. What, what goes on in that estate? I mean, what do you want to use the site for? Well, what's your, what's, your, what's your plan? I'm familiar with resi, so I'm hoping I can get resi on it, to be honest. But, uh, you know, if you advise me otherwise, um, you know, what sort of factors would affect what I can put on it? Okay. Um, again, it's back to our geographic information. Um, so it, it, it's, all, it's all about fact fighting, mm. fact finding, um, yeah. and getting that information. Um, I think we need to, there's, there's been some earth movements on the site. I can see we've got mounds. Mm -hmm. We've also got um, some water bodies on the site. Yeah. You don't have any of that in the surrounding area. That makes me think perhaps 
things are being put on the site mm -hmm. and potentially things are being extracted from the site. Okay. So another source um, of uh, information is the Environment Agency, mm. um, whether there are any permits mm. um, from this site uh, okay. at all. So what, what does that actually mean, though, in terms of those considerations? Does that mean that it's going to be... Um, you know, a really messy long-term problem and... Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, and, but it's, it's getting to that point of knowledge, okay. that information. So what we, need, we need to go back to basics. Mm -hmm. What you need is a pre-assessment. Okay. We look at all the different technical disciplines um, that could be applicable. I notice there's a church adjacent uh, to the site, not far away from the site. Yep. So you'd need to consider uh, any impact on heritage assets. Okay. Quite often those are listed. Right. Um, we, um, again, with the mounds and the um, pond area, you'd need to consider any ecological effects. Are there great crested newts mm. um, on the site? So again, with those from my previous development, yeah. So again, yeah. It's, it's getting that knowledge yeah. for you to be able to be in a position of saying, yes, this is something I want to go for, or no, it's not. I think okay. it's, it's, time. it's time to move on. Okay. Um, we'll also look at uh, flood zones. Um, as well on the site, um, mm -hmm. but obviously residential is a vulnerable um, use, yes. um, so we, we also look at that. So in the end, your, your report that you receive from us mm -hmm. um, gives you a good overall guide um, as to what potentially the uses of the site could be, yeah. the potential for contamination, yeah. um, and all of this is desk-based. Okay, right. Um, and all of this will come at no cost to you, um, as it's uh, an early indication for you um, to start making uh, decisions on site. Wow, that sounds good. Okay. Um, another uh, uh, option for you is we're using quite a lot of drones now. So if this is something that you want to consider taking forward, mm. um, we now don't always use um, standard surveying techniques mm. going to the site for topographical. Mm. We will use drones um, and these will take very high resolution images of the site, we then can digitise that, that can then become your topographical survey. Wow, okay. That information then can be, um, it becomes for 3D visualisations mm -hmm. as well. So if going forward, mm -hmm. you've, you've paid for that one service, but you can use it for your landscape visual impact assessment. Okay, that you, all sounds very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this, is the, this is important yeah. because um, you said it's set six hectares. Yes. If you're thinking residential, mm. my mind's thinking approximately 200 dwellings. Yes. That then falls into um, Schedule 2 of the EIA regulations. Okay. So potentially it could be EIA development. Right. But you need to know all of this information up front because mm. nobody likes surprises no, further absolutely. down. Um, so we need to get that basic level um, of information. Mm. Okay. But again, you know, when you move on to the drones, um, mm. it's, you, you make that decision when you think this is the site yes. that you're going to go forward with. Yeah. Um, and visualisations as well, they're, they're very strong um, in terms of using your consultations and mm. communities and people really being able to see mm. what this potential development uh, may look like. Yeah, and that's really important to me, to be honest, because my previous sites, have, you know, they've always been um, uh, uh, the highest standard I can get them to, and the community consultation side of it is pretty important. So um, I definitely don't want to be winging it at that stage if we've got a controversial site. Okay. Fine. I think, as I said, going forward, we can undertake this pre-assessment for you. Okay. Um, if that's something you'd like us to do. Um, we would perhaps call upon our colleagues in Landmark to provide us some of the um, information um, in order to get to that point of knowledge for you. Fantastic, yeah. Um, and I think... Um, you have to have that level of information. This is new territory for you. Yeah. Um, you need a bit of hand-holding. Yeah. Um, you, you were honest about that at the start. This is, this is a bigger scheme that you're looking at, and we're more than happy to help. Fantastic. That all sounds really good. Um, in terms of some other questions, then, that, that are coming into my mind, um, again, because uh, you know, we want this, this site to, to have you know, strong ecological value to it as well, that really concerns me in terms of something that might have levels of contamination in there. So how, how, you know, how mutually exclusive are um, you know, good biodiversity on the site and, and you know, contaminated sites? How far can you take them? They, they can work well together. It's all about choosing what is right mm -hmm. for that site, what, what um, habitat 
mm. um, you want to create. It's obviously got to be right for the wider surrounding area. Mm. Um, but we can also certainly put in um, informal and formal recreation um, uh, and pathways as part of the process in areas that perhaps we don't, we find that we don't want to dig down. Yeah. We cap and we use those and you know, that becomes part of the overall scheme. Okay. And be that residential or you might think maybe more mixed use given mm. the um, industrial uses adjacent to the site. Okay. So you're saying then that the potentially more contaminated areas of the site might be better for commercial use and then I can just weave in housing where it's appropriate? Absolutely, because um, okay. commercial is less vulnerable yeah. um, in that situation. And yeah. often the, the best advice if you find something contaminated is leave it where it is. Mm. Make sure it's safe, cap it, but leave it where it is design that in as part of the scheme and again having that knowledge early on means that your design evolution um, works in that way mm -hmm. rather than you having to retrospectively shunt around your development yes. to accommodate some new information that you found okay brilliant so do you just want to just re-explain to me the process we need to go through then and what i need to do and what you do at each stage now to take it forward we can start working on the pre-assessment immediately okay. um, we can that will be produced within one week okay um, that will flag up um, any issues that we need to look at further um, mm -hmm. and we can discuss those with you yeah. and getting you to the point of knowledge or comfort and support um, that you need for your first brownfield venture. Brilliant, that sounds excellent. Okay, thank you Laura, thank you very much. Should we go and have a bite of lunch? Yeah, great, thanks. Okay. <laughs>